I think it's the worst television I've ever seen in my life. It is. Ever. It is terrible. I think it. it Genuinely, like this is this is Disney's long-term strategy here to produce such utter garbage that their trilogy will be remembered like the prequels at some point after having buried the Star Wars name in such a quantity of liquid fecal matter. You'll be looking back at Rey and going, do you remember when Star Wars had character development? That's their plan, Kyle, and it will succeed. Right, right. Their plan is to destroy the name so that their trilogy will stand up uh, the test of time. It's a great business strategy. Um, really, really top-notch investigative journalism, guys. You guys nailed it. Well done. This organized chaos video is brought to you by Gems Art Studio. This video is also brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello again. So after I posted the thing asking people which cringe Obi-Wan Kenobi reviews they wanted me to cover, um, I got a request. Uh, ooh, there are so many. There's a guy that popped in my feed who had a bombastic title, Obi-Wan is the worst Star Wars content ever. I blacklisted the channel and can't remember the name. Got it. The name is Archcast. So I dug it up. And here we go. The Archcast, 50,000 subscribers. Uh, I will let you go, guys know one of my rules is going to be I don't want to talk about anybody who is smaller than me, which we haven't done yet. Uh, this guy's starting to push it. Although, God, he's killing my view numbers. So, uh, maybe he shouldn't even count. Uh, but yes, the worst Star Wars ever in a picture from the Star Wars holiday special. Uh, let's get a quick idea of what this guy will be like. Let's look at his Brie Larson content. Limited Brie Larson content. Of course, Blizzard developers Rebel call out eugenics level diversity tool too woke for the woke. Uh, okay. That's that's the cringiest thing I've ever read in my life. <laughs> All right. Worst Star Wars ever. Uh, Obi-Wan Episode 3 is the worst Star Wars ever made. Disgraceful. Obi-Wan reaction and review. You know, you can't call anything the worst Star Wars ever if you've actually seen the Holiday Special. I'm sorry, you can't. The Holiday Special is, like, the worst thing to ever exist in the history of ever. But let's see, this is 28 minutes. We'll see if I get through the whole thing. They've done it, Kyle. They have finally done it. They have achieved the impossible with this episode, Kyle. They have made me look at the Disney trilogy with fondness. I mean, you're standing alone. I still hate that, but that's good for you, I suppose. This episode is truly, I think, somehow I think it's the worst Star Wars media I've ever seen in my entire life, to be honest with you. <laughs> it is. Like, this... <laughs> the Star Wars Christmas special does not live up to this. Yeah, I think we have a new contender. Episode 3. Episode 3 is... It's beyond words. There, there is very little I can say beyond that. It is the most. I think. Yeah, they gotta back this up at some point, right? Twenty-eight minutes. They gotta talk about how bad this is, right? Because, like, yeah, it's not the best thing ever, but it's it's good. It's it's not worse than the holiday special. I think it's the worst television I've ever seen in my life. It is. Ever. It is terrible. I think it. it Genuinely, like this is this is Disney's long-term strategy here to produce such utter garbage that their trilogy will be remembered like the prequels at some point after having buried the Star Wars name in such a quantity of liquid fecal matter. You'll be looking back at Rey and going, do you remember when Star Wars had character development? That's their plan, Kyle, and it will succeed. Right, right. Their plan is to destroy the name so that their trilogy will stand up uh, the test of time. It's a great business strategy. Um, really, really top-notch investigative journalism, guys. You guys nailed it. Well done. It certainly is, uh... I mean, that's a theory, I guess. 
I don't think that's... Uh, I think they're just trying to milk it at this point. You remember when they said... Disney admitted that, yes, there is Star Wars fatigue. That was like... That was after episode... The second episode of the new trilogy. Of course. Okay. Of course they've they They've only increased... They've only increased the amount of shows because they don't care about the IP. We already know this. And they're attempting to milk it while it's still turning a profit. Uh, yeah, of course they're wanting to milk it. They spent, paid $4 billion on it. Um, Disney's an evil corporation. Yes, they want to milk it. The question is, was this show poorly done? Did they get the people who they got to milk it? Did they do a bad job? Because even though Disney is evil and they don't care about the Star Wars IP and they will want to just milk all the money from it that they can, they can also hire people who care about it. And that's the thing, to a degree. They... They want to milk it, but they don't want to destroy the name. Because if you remember, the prequels were pretty much hated. I'm not a fan of the prequels. And Disney bought the IP still for $4 billion. And their goal is to keep stuff coming out so they can still make money off it. But they don't want to completely wreck the IP, so that way, you know, they can still make money off of it. They don't want it to become this tainted brand, which it kind of already was. What saved it was really the fact that it's been so goddamn long since the prequels, and now people are remembering it fondly. Which, honestly, that might happen with the sequel trilogy. It might. Like I said, I like the first two entries of the sequel trilogy. It's the, the, the third one really lets it down. The third one's the weak one in that trilogy by, like, a decent margin. But uh, let's see if these guys actually talk about what they dislike in Obi-Wan Episode 3. Which is I don't why even know if it... my theory oh, is the only correct theory. This is a ploy, a plan, a strategy. Mm -hmm. For money, yes. And God, this is They're so... They're milking hard. Thoroughly bad too, to the point that Star Wars, Disney Star Wars, has now had to go to the hide behind the black person strategy, oh. where they're like, they put out a tweet, we are proud to welcome Moses Ingram, she, she's been receiving racist messages, oh my god, this is the worst, a racist, racist, no, no. You know, Ben Shapiro talked about this too, these guys are so triggered, hey, you know, if you don't want to be racist, don't be triggered when people say don't be racist. You know what it tells me when these guys get so triggered when somebody says don't be racist? It means, hey, I, I want to be racist. Why won't they let me be racist? Why are they singling me out? I just want to be a racist asshole, and they're singling me out. That's what this tells me. People don't dislike Moses Ingram's character because they dislike black people. They dislike her because she's genuinely awful she is a terrible character and in this series oh god we don't actually know that much about her character she's definitely got a chip on her shoulder she is angry about something uh i mean we start at the beginning seeing the younglings so i'm going to assume she was one of those younglings but uh yeah she's definitely pissed about something uh we don't know her full character development yet because they haven't gone to it yet because the story's not over yet but um like i said i there's that one scene i thought she did really didn't do a good job and i thought she needed to sell it that being said i am interested to see what they do with her character she is a walking plot hole. Okay, so there's a tunnel, right? Leia is fleeing through a tunnel. She's a walking plot hole? Okay, what? With a rebel pilot resistance liaison, whatever the hell, right? It's a long tunnel. There's only one entrance. There is only one exit. We are not shown anything else. Leia has been running down this tunnel for 10 minutes. Raver enters the tunnel afterwards, then gets ahead of Leia, kills the rebel contract at the other end of the tunnel, and then waits for Leia to get to her. Yep. <laughs> it was, uh, like, there's there's not much more to say than th this episode is a series of contrivances. Do we establish the full geography of these tunnels? Whatever. Uh, these guys are just getting bitchy. One after the other. Like, even before this scene, uh, they're... Leia and Obi-Wan are wandering around in some generic Arizonan area, 
and all of a sudden they're like, we're lost, and Leia's like, I'm gonna go... Obi-Wan's being, you know, useless, because Leia's the only character that can do anything. She goes up to a, a random truck driver and she's like, hello! Obi-Wan's being useless? Obi-Wan's defending her quite a bit. He's hardly fucking useless. That's the thing, they always want to, like, preach it to fit their narrative, but, like, no, Obi-Wan is very much the hero of this story, if you're paying attention. Can we get a ride? And these are our names and stuff, and I'm gonna do all the talking, and Obi-Wan sits there dumbfounded because he's too stupid to do anything. Obi-Wan's character has been completely destroyed, upended, and assassinated in this show. Completely. Like wow, wow, really? Really? Jesus Christ. Oh, okay, so... Obi-Wan's arc in this, and it's pretty clear this is his fucking arc, is that he starts this as a fugitive. He's hiding. He's on the run. He doesn't want to put himself out there because he's afraid if he puts himself out there, it's going to draw attention to Luke and Leia. Uh, he doesn't want them to know, anybody know about him, so he's hiding. Um, hell, the first episode was a Jedi coming to him saying, please help me, and him saying no, and then that Jedi, spoiler, dies all because obi-wan said no this is about obi-wan kind of being a hermit and then going back into the world because the world needs him and it, it's i mean if you watch the first episode it's set up a lot like the hero's journey uh like he gets his call to action from that jedi and he says no that's what happens in the hero's journey the first call to action you say no to happens to neil happens to luke you must learn the ways of the Force if you're to come with me to Alderaan. Alderaan? I'm not going to Alderaan. I'm going to get home. It's late. I'm imported as it is. I can't do this. Take it, Gandalf. Take it. No, sir, no. You must take it. You cannot offer me this ring. I'm giving it to you. Don't! Tempt me, Frodo! What happened to you? You were once a great Jedi. The time of the Jedi is over. Like, Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope? This, this episode... Yes, I hate when characters develop. I hate that. I, I, I don't want my characters to develop ever. The, the bad one, the one before was bad. This one obliterates the meaning of the ending of Revenge of Sith and the beginning of A New Hope. Obi-Wan is receiving the Luke Skywalker treatment. That's what's happening. Yep. They're like... The, the, it obliterates them? It obliterates them? So at the end of Revenge of the Sith, he was a guy who was a fugitive who was kind of uh, broken. And we're picking up from there. Uh, it's, honestly, I didn't even think about how there'd ha how it'd be good to have a middle story. Because you would be kind of broken after everything you believed in and fought for got massacred. So it makes sense you'd be kind of broken. And giving you a middle story where you get to see how he becomes the character he is in New Hope. That actually makes sense to me. Like, we haven't ruined this character yet. <laughs> Let's and get of course, started. Obi-Wan gets confronted by Darth Vader who beats him up handily. Uh, Obi-Wan doesn't even put up a fight. He's completely useless. He... He yes, gets ambushed by Vader at like two separate occasions, despite being able to sense him from like 20 meters away initially, just because reasons. Yep. Vader force Look, grabs I him, Obi-Wan can do nothing, and Obi-Wan has to be saved by the... How far away do you think 20 meters is? I mean, it's not like right behind you, but it's not like super far away either. Nameless resistance contact. Yep, but the fighting choreography itself is is painful. Like, the, the encounter is Obi-Wan's wandering around, and he can't even put up a fight, which is, you know, to be expected in the show. But on top of that... the Yeah, because he's kind of finding himself. He's kind of broken. He probably hasn't used his lightsaber in a long goddamn time, honestly. The way they portray it, the way they have Obi-Wan, like, do it, it's like Obi-Wan's a guy who beat him, right? He beat him... Uh, in in the in the Battle of Heroes during the the Battle of Mustafar, and he can't even he can't even muster the strength to fight him, let alone be able to um, resist him. Like, yes, because of what he did to him, he is damaged from that. He fucked up Anakin. 
bad. And he is damaged from that. And he is not interested in doing that to him again. I mean, look what's happened to Anakin after that fight. Anakin is just like a Frankenstein's beast of a monster. That's what Darth Vader is. Uh, Obi-Wan made that. And he feels guilt for that, which is part of his character. Uh. Anakin uses the force on him, no problem, and just drags him through the fire, just like Arch said. It's it's pain. It was the most painful scene to watch, and the best part is it's two two old men walking around in a gravel pit. Yep, there mm. there's no interest in it. There's no weight or gravitas because it is just a cannon annihilating scene. Like this this is the multiverse again. That god awful terrible ass concept. The the Grand Inquisitor is killed in the first episode by Raver, who then explains about oh Obi Wan killed him. Uh, Obi Obi Wan did. Like really. The Grand Inquisitor was killed without even drawing his weapon. Stabbed through the stomach, was he? By a lightsaber. Okay, everybody buys it. It's just... God. It is painful. This entire episode, it is hard to muster, like, how much misery this episode has brought us. And uh, ignore, ignore all of the the, <laughs> the story contrivances. Like, ignore the damage this does to the can. Ignore the, the fact that Obi-Wan is getting the Luke Skywalker treatment. Let's just go over all of the ridiculous plot holes, shall we? So, I would like to go over what the Luke Skywalker treatment is, but I have a feeling if I asked that and they answered, we would be into The Last Jedi again, because Everything revolves around The Last Jedi anymore. Oh my god. Obi-Wan is a lover of droids now, so he fixes up Lola, Leia's little retarded toy droid, which is already on sale, by the way, which is only the only reason why that thing goddamn exists. So he, he's, a, he's a friend to all droids now. That's that's Obi-Wan's car persona now. The, the freighter, the automated, slow and... Was there a point where he was anti-droid? I don't remember a point where he was ever anti-droid. ...as freighter that they got on in the first episode is not intercepted. And it's worth noting, anytime they do something new, they will add something new to the canon. And I don't really see it being canned destroying that Obi-Wan fixes droids. There is a massive Imperial presence on this planet. The city is filled with stormtroopers. Nobody bothers. They have the manifest. Reva has the goddamn manifest of the automated freighter. In other words, it only goes one place. Doesn't know where he is. Needs to send out probes to find him. It's just... Yep. It's, <laughs> it is so... Dumb. And of course, as you mentioned too, Obi-Wan is helpless. He walks through the desert, moping his face off with Leia's like, Hey, I I'll have to take care of us because you're an, an old stupid man. Hey, we can catch up. That's why I remember. They're in the desert and they're looking for him. Um. Ride with this random farm person here. <sighs> mm. the, the farmer too <laughs> turns out to be the bad guy. He's like, hey, I brought them to you to the checkpoint. The problem here is he already encountered another random five stormtroopers wandering through the desert for no particular reason. If he wanted to betray them, he could have just told them. He could have like, hey, Frank, hey, I've got these suspicious dudes here. He didn't suspect them at that point. That's why he didn't. Did you watch the show? No. No, he waited till he got to the checkpoint for some reason, because plot contrivance, I guess. Gotta wait till they get to the actual destination so that they can have the other, the other thing conveniently happen. Oh, that well, scene. That was that Ugh. was. There's. It's even worse than that. Because okay, so there's the resistance content. Right? Obi Wan kills like five or six stormtroopers handily, easily, no issues, no effort, because he's a goddamn yep. Jedi using a blaster against stormtroopers. It's not even a challenge. Then, a car drives up with three stormtroopers in it, and Obi-Wan's like, oh my god, well, I'm screwed, lays down his weapon and surrenders. <laughs> yep. That was that was painful, because it's after he just slaughters these stormtroopers, right, with a blaster. Which, by the way, I'm having a hard time, like, yeah, I get it, using the blaster to conceal the fact that he's a Jedi, but it's fucking Obi-Wan. He, he's so uncivilized, he throws the blaster. It's like they're doing it. 
Okay. Now I gotta look into this. I said raise your head. Alright, so re-watching that scene, essentially what you end up with is, yes, uh, so at the beginning guards are, in the first segment, you have guards pointing weapons at Obi-Wan, uh, there's a shootout, Obi-Wan essentially gets to jump on them, uh, like they, they have their guns pointed, but it's, it's also clear they're not sure what type of threat he is. Uh, he gets to jump on them and gets them all. And then we have these three that, uh, that essentially come at him from a distance and run up. That being said, I would say it does seem like a little bit weak writing, because... Yeah, like, he seems like he just instantly surrenders to these guys. And partially that is because the, the, the officer in the back is actually helping him. And I don't remember, did he recognize her? Is that maybe why he surrendered? Alright, yeah, so it's not, it doesn't look like he recognizes her at all. So yeah, I would say that's a uh, flimsy writing. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but yeah, that that's flimsy writing. I'm having a hard time, like, yeah, I get it, using the blaster to conceal the fact that he's a Jedi. But it's fucking Obi-Wan. He, he's so uncivilized, he throws the blaster away. It's like they're doing it intentionally to just completely ruin the scene. Well, you just said it's so he's not broadcasting the fact that he's a Jedi. Where he's like, he just hates blasters. He hates droids. He repairs droids. Like, he does everything. He hates droids? I'm confused. When Obi-Wan hates droids? Yeah, no, so... Yeah, there doesn't appear to be anything about him specifically hating droids. He's a little dismissive of them, which, I mean... You could argue that because he knows how they work, that's partially why he's a little dismissive of them, because they are just devices. Maybe they're just devices to him. I don't see how that goes against it. Um, yeah. He breaks everything that makes him his character... The fact that he didn't give up in the end of Revenge of the Sith, he was, he was, you know, beaten but not defeated. Now he's just defeated and beaten. <laughs> uh, you know, you can go down in the dumps and still not be defeated. You don't always have to be optimistic and happy in your life. You're allowed to go down in the dumps a bit. As long as you get back up. And that's what this story is about. It's about him getting back up. <laughs> And why does he surrender? Because, oh, this, the entire scene. It's because yep. the officer, <laughs> who is randomly traveling around with three dumbass stormtroopers, a senior lieutenant, then pulls out her pistol and shoots the stormtroopers. Because the plot demanded it. That's why Obi-Wan surrendered. Because the goddamn plot demanded it. And then, then she's like, Oh, hey, I'm your resistance contact. I was supposed to meet you at the coordinate. They were the correct coordinates, by the way. But you were already gone by the time I got here. there. That was the point where... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, that was kind of flimsy writing. I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys a point for that one, because mostly you guys have just been full shit. Way, way behind Obi-Wan. They have been driving on a vehicle for God only knows how long. So this chick got to that point, doubled back, got in front of Obi-Wan to do this retarded plot contrivance scene. They cannot stop ruining their own plot. Oh, oh, and, oh. and. So, oh, no. <laughs> Obi-Wan's sitting in the back. He takes up his hoodie to make him extra suspicious, and he's ordered oh, off the God. thing, right? He's, he's even being interrogated <laughs> on the truck by the stormtroopers. We're like, hmm, we're looking for a Jedi. Have you seen anything? And he's like, no. And they're like, well, that's a bit suspicious. Like, oh, if only we knew what this Jedi looked like. Because you remember the picture? They had a hologram off his face the last episode. I guess Rava just... Forgot to send that to everybody else. And they don't need to know what he looks like, nor the fact that it's the legendary Obi-Wan Kenobi, who's not a famous uh, hero of the Republic era during the Clone Wars or anything. No, 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 no. 
It, it's, it's like nobody even recognizes him. It'd be like the equivalent of like, you know, a famous hero just shows up and you're from some great war and you're like, holy shit, it's, you know, friggin' Alexander the Great, you know, right next to you on the card, but you can't tell the difference. <laughs> Would you recognize Alexander the Great if he was sitting right next to you in the car? Um, I wouldn't. Uh, so yeah, it is interesting she didn't broadcast a picture to these guys. Uh, yeah, she did get the location from the one guy, so they would know he's here. Yeah, it seems a little flimsy. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's she, because she didn't send the picture, so a droid has to show up and be like, beep, beep, oh, hey, I have the picture. This is the... I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. Oh, so the picture was getting sent out. They just didn't get it yet. Okay. So much. I hate it so very much. It's not even the worst part either, because another part, another annoying thing, they get to their hideout, right? Mm -hmm. And so like, oh yeah, we've been helping Jedi come through here, the underground railway the whole time. There's Turns out there's so many Jedi you wouldn't believe. Billions of them. Trillions. Nobody really got killed during Order 66. There's so many Jedi, it's not even funny anymore. Yep. The amount of people that survive already Order 66 has only increased as time has gone on as they just keep adding more people that survived. I'm, I'm at the so, what? So, like, so far in canon, what? Maybe a dozen people have survived it at this point? The point now where I'm starting to ask, like, who actually died? Like, all That's what happens when you expand canon. That That is a side effect of it. All the, all the head honchos died, but really they just missed everybody. <laughs> there were a lot of Jedis, okay. And Palpatine's Order 66 was uh, apparently not as successful as it was supposed to be, huh? This this is a high-ranking Imperial official here also helping them. She is a senior lieutenant with two oh. high-clearance capsules. Like, she's no nobody, okay? Nobody suspects her. She just keeps going in and out of this random junkyard repair shop. Jedis keep disappearing from the goddamn planet. Oh, yeah. And of Under course, her watch, we haven't caught any Jedi. <laughs> and of course, right? They're they're about to escape. They're have there been a lot of Jedi disappearing from that planet? I don't recall that. Like the the network he's on is not like a, a network designed to smuggle Jedi's out. It's just a network designed to smuggle people out. About to head on out there to meet the pilot and escape the planet. When Obi Wan, halfway down the tunnel, goes, I sense a disturbance in the Force. Goes all the way back to see Anakin yeah. and then decides, I should stick around for a while. <laughs> oh God. That's right, there was that painful scene where Vader starts killing random people to try to torment Obi-Wan. But the thing is, Obi-Wan, by going back, you've only made him do that. Yeah, because... <laughs> Obi-Wan senses Vader long before Vader senses him, which is retarded enough, because, okay, if we accept that Obi-Wan has been using his powers for ten years and he's super rusty, etc., that's why you got his ass kicked, fair enough. How the hell... Is he, is he capable? His presence. Yeah. yeah. How how is he picking up Vader long before Vader is picking him up? And you see the moment when when Vader finally senses him and starts killing random innocents for shits and giggles to torment Obi Wan, and Obi Wan just just stands there like, maybe I should leave. He stands there like Obi Wan's a broken man in this show. Broken. Maybe Obi Wan's is better with the Force than Vader defeated it's not the obi-wan remember from revenge of the sith at the end where he's you know beaten because of what happened by to anakin that they had to put him down basically but he's defeated like he's so defeated yes because they gave him an arc in this story which is what they should do he watches them torture innocent and kill innocent people and the obi-wan that we all know, Obi-Wan Kenobi, would never have allowed that to happen. He would have already been gone before that even happened, so that that would have never happened in the first place. He would have he would have been out, in and out. But this, this is not the Obi-Wan we were left with at the end of Revenge of the Sith, because he's been broken since then. 
he's not doing well. This is him rebuilding himself. This is the problem. This show has visceral scenes, right? There's a stormtrooper that falls from the tower when they the outpost when they're at the outpost that gets sheared in half. There's lots of gratuitous violence, like Anakin killing uh, children. Well, a younger adult, I, I guess, not a child. But the show treats the audience like children, like when it comes to the actual story, especially with the Leia character. Oh my God, she is so insufferable. Like they're, they're trying to pull this whole like, oh, you know, black people, we gotta hide behind black. I like the Leia character, and it seems largely based on what we see in A New Hope. Black people thing kind of thing with the corporation thing. But honestly, the worst character, more than Reva, is Leia. God, she is the most insufferable character. Not the child's fault, bear that in mind, but the actual character they make her play. You know, and she acts a lot like Leia did in the 1977 movie. Which gives you an idea about how these guys would react if this, if the 1977 movie came out right now. I cannot stand her. Any, any time she's on the screen, it's pain to watch. She's terrible. And it, the way she is throughout the whole thing, too. Like, on the one hand, she's the one guiding Obi-Wan by the hand, quite literally. And then yep. suddenly she's like, oh my god, I'm scared now. Why, what, are, why are we here? I must go home. I didn't mean to run away. F well, I mean, she's resourceful in helping out, like, you know, like Leia was throughout the whole franchise. Uh, oh, I wouldn't say she's guiding him by the hand. <laughs> Five seconds later, she's the same brave character again. Yeah, how dare she contribute? What's wrong with her? Like, you need to go after Obi-Wan and save him. I'll make it to the shuttle myself. <sighs> yeah, yeah, they're like, oh, let's set, let the child go by herself. Like, what the fuck? That's not Obi-Wan Kenobi. Abandons the child to fend for the child's self. Well, then the other adult abandons the child yes. like, to fend for herself. Like, like what the fuck? Everyone just doesn't care in this universe. Like, things are so contrived. It's demanded by the plot. And the idiocy is, again, like I mentioned, this is a tunnel. It seems to be going one way, one way only. It's, it's a simple goddamn tunnel. And they leave way ahead. The key phrase there, it seems to be... Of Reva. They are down the tunnel. They have been running down the tunnel for God only knows. And the random ass resistance chick manages to run all the way back down the tunnel again, not running into Reva on the way, leaving the tunnel unde undetected, getting to the slag pit place to save Obi-Wan, and Reva still makes it out ahead of the child so she can wait for her dramatically at the end. I hate everything about it. It is so unbelievably contrived. Like, nobody thought for- So maybe Reva knew something about the tunnel that the audience doesn't? About this. For two seconds, how this story, how this timeline makes no sense. Yep, none of it, none of it lines up. Not a single thing. Yeah, you, you- God, these people drive me nuts. These characters need to be exactly how I envision. Listen, Obi-Wan can't go through any arc or anything between episode 3 and episode 4. He just has to be the same boring character throughout all that. Don't you dare try to give him an arc. Don't you dare try to say that he's down on his, on his luck. Don't you dare. And the thing is, the other episodes were bad. But this one... Like, I feel like it shed all of its pretenses, and it's just, it's painfully going through the motions of trying to progress the plot so that it can end. <laughs> That's what it feels like after watching it. it. Oh, it actively takes the piss. Like, it violates, it's like, whoever was right, I don't even... It feels like maybe this was written by like <laughs> seven people who never talked to each other and had responsibilities for different different parts of the plot. Like one person is like, wouldn't it be cool if Reva was the one who discovered the tunnel and she'd go through it and she'd see it like a Jedi symbol and she'd go like, Rawr! 
we're getting to a service on furniture. And then he wrote that in the script. <laughs> and then another person yep. wrote in like, oh, but wouldn't it also be cool if Reva was at the end of the tunnel? And Leia was there like, are you my uh, pickup? And she's like, no, I'm sorry, little child. I'm death. Wouldn't that be cool too? Let's do both. No. Are you my pickup? Says Leia to the clearly dressed bad guy standing, you yes. know, over a dead body. The the Inquisitor <laughs> dressed in black clothing, standing over the killed rebel pilot. Eh? Yes, not like she didn't just encounter somebody who was dressed as an Imperial officer who was actually helping her. Are you my friend? No, no. <laughs> Oh, the show Not is so painful. And we've got to talk about <laughs> Vader as well. So Vader eventually oh. corners Obi-Wan, uh, does oh, his no. force power shape, which Obi-Wan can't resist at this point, and sets some shot on fire and starts dragging him through the flames. Which, fair enough, I can see that happening. Anakin's a bit of a petulant uh, turd at this point, right? Yep, a bit angry. <laughs> yeah, a little, little bit of a petulant bastard, fair enough. Then he decides, like, well, uh, this is too easy, I guess. Uh, puts out the fire and sends a stormtrooper to fetch him. Conveniently. Rebel p pilot woman thing then shows up, shoots the stormtrooper, sets the stuff on fire again. Because, you see, this mystical fuel, it can be put out and relighted however many times you want to create a convenient fire barrier. After which a droid walks out. It doesn't get hit by like two dozen stormtroopers shooting at it from five feet away, which, you know, lower accurate. And Vader, who could just put the fire out again if he so chose, or jump over it, or walk through it in his goddamn armor, or any billion other things to get Obi Wan, who is five feet away, just goes like, eh, and leaves. He just stands there, stares as they escape like doesn't do a thing in character and then he's like turns around and he just walks away it's yeah. like what the fuck <laughs> what? Yeah, well i guess i could do something but nah, screw it i'm leaving not only did they ruin the encounter in a new hope so badly by this scene but they also like replaced it with a scene that is so incredibly painful to watch that honestly i have no doubt in my mind People are going to forget this show ever existed. I damn well hope so. And <laughs> it's, the scene is shot in such a way as to suggest that he's somehow afraid of the flames. And I'm like, I don't care. He's, he's Darth Vader. He can go around the flames if he wants to. There's plenty of space. He's a Sith Lord. He can jump over the flames if he wants to. Hell, he can dig under it for all I goddamn care. But this is Obi-Wan, five feet in front of him. Like, you can't yeah, and he's laying on the ground and give pain. up. See, he doesn't even need he doesn't even to go, go to Obi-Wan. He could, be, because, oh my goodness. So when he fights Obi-Wan, he uses the Force. We mentioned this before, and he grabs Obi-Wan and lifts him up. Well, the thing is why Jedi and Sith don't really do that too often is because, well, generally the other opponent can, you know, block him out from doing that. Otherwise, they just Force choke each other to death. Or force neck snap each other all the time, you know? But in this case, Obi-Wan's like, I can't even defend myself. And he gets grabbed by the force. So he's laying on the ground, incapacitated for, for fighting, not able to fight anymore. All he would have to do is reach to the force and just snap his neck. Or just drag him through the fire back to his side. And the <laughs> droid couldn't do anything about it. The droid yeah. doesn't have the force. He could just drag the droid too. He can just... It is... Like every scene in this bloody show feels like it is purpose made to. J I do feel like at a point we have to also kind of uh, go with the fact that the Force is kind of a story contrivance in and of itself. Um, let's rewatch that scene. <laughs> Okay, so refreshing myself on here. The reason why Leia was left by herself was because the uh, the person who was smuggling them uh, was concerned about Obi-Wan. Leia said, I can handle this. You go take care of him. Uh, she gave her instructions on what, Leia, on what Leia needed to do, and that's what happened.
Okay, as for the fuel, it's clear it was uh, artificially suppressed. And it's reignited again once it gets uh, exposure to more flame. Okay, so in that that point, they lose sight of Obi Wan on the other side of the flames. Uh, it's become much bigger at that point, so they can't get around. And Vader go decides to leave the area because there's all stormtroopers trying to find him, and it, I think he's he's assuming Obi Wan's gone at that point, which I assume is a safe assumption. Uh. Yeah, these guys are really looking for stuff to really hate on this thing for. I will give them the, uh, him surrendering really quickly to those three stormtroopers. I'll give them a point on that one. Just piss on everything. It is, like, bad is just not the term anymore. It's it's not applicable. This is so much worse than bad. Like, it makes an active mockery of itself every step of the way. They're not even trying at this point yep. it's it's sadly very true like um the, the halo show we watched not that long ago was bad but this this has surpassed everything anything i've ever seen in terms of how awful this is and uh that's uh that is quite a statement because i've seen some bad crap this this is awful it is surpassed everything you've ever seen as far as how awful it is these guys listen what was there is there clunky writing yeah you can dissect really everything for clunky writing um i still over well over i still largely enjoy this series it's not perfect um but yeah they're getting way too hyperbolic like i bet you these guys haven't even sat down and watched the holiday special fuck man <laughs> this show is pain <laughs> unironically this is one of the worst pieces of entertainment i've ever Oh, if you think this episode's the worst thing you've ever seen, no, you have not seen bad crap at all. I assure you. I watched. Like, just the constant plot holes. The constant annoy. Um, they haven't gone over an actual plot hole yet. I wouldn't mind them actually bringing up a plot hole. They keep That term gets overused so much. Uh, there's not a whole lot of actual plot holes in a story. Uh, they exist. But almost always when people use the term plot hole, they're talking about something that isn't a plot hole. Maybe lazy writing or something like that, but not an actual plot hole. The con another, another thing I want to point out as well, okay? When they arrive at the secret Derpy Derp hideout, it's bright day outside. When they leave it shortly thereafter and Vader arrives, it's the middle of the night. Yeah, time is progressing at weird intervals, and you don't really understand when. Okay, let's see how time progresses there. Okay, it looks like as we see, uh, they go into the hideout, and they're there for a little bit. And as we cut to multiple scenes, we see it getting darker outside. Then when they leave, it's dark out. So that seems logical. And how? Because they just keep jumping around all the time. Like, the story's jumping all over the place. And is not like taking its time. It it feels like it's like I said earlier. It feels like it's just trying to get get it over with. Like it doesn't even want to be a show. It's like just end. <laughs> it's like it's playing itself on fast forward while you watch it. <laughs> it was written by a bunch of bunch of people who were like, "Hey, do you want to do a Star Wars show? No, Star Wars is for nerds and shit. But yeah, it pays really well though. It's fine." Fine, we'll do it, but we're gonna like get to the end of the plot as quickly as possible because I wanna, I wanna go do something else. That is what it feels like. Okay, we'll do it, but we'll hate every minute of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing that. And you can feel the hate for it. The thing is, they got Hayden Christensen in in this scene, and they do nothing with him. Nothing with him. Ye they do nothing in this scene, which is just designed to haunt Obi-Wan, because he's not actually there. That's Obi-Wan, like, ha like having a vision of him, freaking out. Um, and how much do you expect him to do with Hayden Christensen? He's mostly in armor. Hey, I'm, I thought it was awesome they got James Earl Jones back. They, like, even McGregor is here, but, like, his acting can't save this travesty. Like, it doesn't matter. It's not even worth watching for his acting. 
I, I, I earlier I was like maybe it'll be worth watching just to see him act and some of these actors act again. It isn't. It isn't because the the cinematography is bad. The choreography is awful. The music. I don't even want to talk about it. It's so painfully generic. It's not worth discussing. And it's a friggin' Star Wars show. Like, friggin' Star Wars. Like, every Star Wars video game media always takes advantage of John Williams' music. It is a sin to not even use a single iota of that. It's just, it's generic. Do not use any John Williams music? I'm not sure about that one. It's it's bad. Everything about it feels cheap and reeks of just awfulness. The acting, the writing, the dialogue, the sets, everything. <laughs> and even, like, you talk about Ewan McGregor, right? Um, he's a good actor. Sure, nobody is disagreeing about this, but he has no purpose in this show. He, he doesn't. really, really doesn't. Like, his only actions is looking at Leia confused, as Leia does something a ten-year-old child would never do, and he... Well, that's kind of what Leia's character is, though. Leia's character is fairly confident. What you're seeing is, like, the ten-year-old version of that, and... I hate to point this out, children are a little different, and... Yeah, sometimes ten-year-olds are pretty confident. Um... It's a thing. <laughs> looking sad. Like, that is his sole expression in this entire show. Just looking downtrod like a beaten dog. Almost like he has an arc. <laughs> as, as they murder his character in front of him. <sighs> it is... It's honestly tragic to see. And I kind of wish it would just stop. And I feel like also what they're building up to here, what they're going to try and... We'll, we'll get to it. We're almost done. We're almost through this, guys. We can do it. Do Because now they've humiliated him. They've had his shit kicked with no issues. They're going to be in the last episode going, like, oh, he's found himself now. He's found a purpose, and that purpose was Leia. Yes. That was... His, purp his purpose was Leia. Oh, my God. <laughs> his purpose was helping these kids. Or something stupid like that, and he'll and Luke had nothing to do with it. <laughs> yep, and El and he'll be able to somehow beat up Vader again, and then the camera will zoom in on his face and have a little bit of a wink in his eyes, and then the show will end, and he'll be expected to go like, "Wow, that's he! Wow, he became a powerful person or something." Yeah, despite the fact that everything else before makes no sense, the fact that Vader had fought Obi Wan before after the Mustafar thing was always a terrible idea. They they had multiple encounters to the point where it was almost laughable. They were like, hey, how you doing? I haven't seen you in a while. You know, they... So they fought uh, 10 years after Mustafar, and as far as we know, they'll, they'll probably fight again in the series, and that'll be it until A New Hope. Ooh, they fight twice in 20 years. They have weekly catch-ups. Like, how you did, how you been, you know, what's different at work? Like, Christ's sake. <laughs> oh. On the bright side, mean something. Halo is no longer the worst. Oh, my God. These guys don't, these guys haven't seen anything truly bad. This is the worst they've ever seen. TV show I've watched. Yep. I can't believe it. But uh, literally in the same year, the record was smashed. Congratulations, Disney. You have, uh, you, you have truly outperformed yourself with this one. You've beaten Paramount Plus as uh, worst show of the year. Oh my god, these guys are ridiculous. In fact, worst show of my life, actually. <laughs> now all I want to do is watch more Star Trek. That is something awkward, okay? I need to mention that. Arch is, like... Before we even started watching the show, he's like, I'd rather watch Star Trek. <laughs> he just doesn't want to be here. <laughs> oh. And honestly, I don't even blame him. This is pain. This is this is actually an endurance test. Straight up, one of the worst pieces of television I've ever seen. Wow. Uh sorry to have to have you sit down and watch through all that. Uh that was a bit much 
That being said, it also kind of gets you set up for the mindset of uh, the guys who are really hating on this. Because it's clear these guys aren't watching it to, to get the story or anything like that. They're watching it to hate it. They're watching it to hate watch it. If you go into something to hate watch it, you'll find something to hate watch and pretty much it. Excuse me. You'll find something to hate watch in pretty much everything. There's very few exceptions. Everything's going to have little foibles, little issues with it. If you're watching to hate watch it, you're going to hate watch it. It doesn't matter how good it is. You'll hate watch it and you'll hate on it. And that's what we're seeing with these guys. These guys, they don't really feel like they're setting the trend for uh, the narrative that, against this show. But these guys are definitely flowing along with it. Um, this is a side effect of what you get when you get people like Neurotic and to a lesser degree Critical Drinker, although he can get pretty bad. And Ben Shapiro, who we just watched. When we get them critiquing media, this is the byproduct of what we get. These are like the people who learn critique from those guys. And then they do their substandard critique, but they don't understand fully what they're talking about. So they end up nitpicking shit that doesn't even need nitpicked. Uh, yes, they came up with a valid critique on there. The, the thing with the guards was clunky and weird. All their critiques were pretty weak. I, I double-checked watching it. I didn't think I'd have to memorize the episode. Maybe I should have. But yeah, uh, all their critiques were weak sauce by a decent margin. And that's the thing. So we're ending up with really bad reviewers now. Uh, yay. And really bad reviewers learning from really bad reviewers. Oh, God. There's so much shit in the review culture. It's bad. I guess, it, I guess I'm here to break it down. Yay. They think order and chaos are somehow opposites and try to control what won't. I used to fuck guys like you in prison. And on the count of one, stir, whip, sir, whip, 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 stir. Stir, whip, sir, whip, 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 stir. Come on, faster all together now, cooking can be fun. Sir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir. Stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir. Coming along nicely now. Step three. We also have to beat. So it's beat, 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 stir, whip, stir, whip, beat, beat, stir. That's not right. I'm sorry. Stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir, beat, stir, whip, stir, whip, 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 stir, beat. Da -da 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 -da. Coming, coming along nicely. Mmm, starting to have a fine aroma. 